Why are some of the smartest people in the world completely obsessed with Bitcoin, while other equally smart people dismiss it as a total scam? The answer comes down to five simple rules that most people have never heard of. Here's what I'll show you. First, what makes Bitcoin fundamentally different from every form of money that's ever existed? Second, why Bitcoin isn't actually competing with other cryptocurrencies at all? And third, the hidden pattern that explains why Bitcoin could become as inevitable as the internet itself. I should say these five rules actually come from Jeff Booth, the author of Price of Tomorrow. A system bounded by energy will reprice all $900 trillion of assets. All. But I made them easier to remember with my DOPES framework. And I'll also explain each concept in simple terms. By the end of this video, you'll understand Bitcoin better than 95% of people, including most investors. But first, let me show you why my four-year-old sees money more clearly than most adults. Look at this image. Which one here is the odd one out? If you're like most adults, you'll probably say, um, that one is pretend money. But most kids say this. Hmm, that one, because it's like coined. Kids see reality more clearly. Adults apply social concepts about what real money means. This is exactly why Bitcoin is revolutionary. The only way to understand it is to go back to first principles and try and forget everything you know about money. Bitcoin requires energy to create it. That's why it's called proof of work. It's the first digital thing that can't just be copied and pasted infinitely like a meme. Each Bitcoin is earned by computers making trillions of guesses per second to find a special number, like a digital treasure hunt that costs real electricity. That's completely different from our current money, which banks create by typing numbers on a keyboard. I'm not joking, that's literally how it works. Bitcoin is like a bodybuilder who has to lift real weight to build muscle. Banks are like Instagram influencers using filters and angles. So rule number one is that Bitcoin is bounded by energy. This means your Bitcoin can't be devalued by someone printing more. But wait, if Bitcoin requires energy, who decides how much energy gets used? Who controls the system and these rules? This is where it really gets interesting. Here's something most people don't realize. Money has always had someone in charge of it. Always. Even gold which was supposed to be free money, got confiscated in 1933 when government said, sorry, this is ours now. Then they devalued the dollar overnight in 1934, cutting everyone's purchasing power by 70%. Well, unless they held gold, of course, but... Um... Huh. When that wasn't enough, they completely removed money from gold in 1971. Nixon said they were... ...to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar in the gold. That was 54 years ago. <laughs> Some temporary fix. But what happens when money has no one in charge? No one who can change the rules. No one who can make more just because they want to. It's like playing a game where no one can suddenly say, I'm changing the rules because I'm losing. Bitcoin is special because nobody controls it anymore. The creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, disappeared. Some people see this as a negative. There's no CEO to complain to, but this is actually what makes Bitcoin unique, the immaculate conception. Nearly all other cryptocurrencies still have their creators making decisions and changing rules. Bitcoin is the first unchangeable set of rules we've ever had. This means no one can freeze your account or change the rules on you. So rule number two is that Bitcoin is decentralized. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The core rules that matter can't be changed because no one would ever agree to make their own investment worth less. Want proof this works? In 2017, Bitcoin Cash tried to change one of the core rules, block size, claiming it would make Bitcoin faster. But bigger blocks would make Bitcoin more centralized because normal people like you and me would be priced out of running nodes. What makes it so secure is that there are thousands of nodes across the world. Basically a system on a computer which checks Bitcoin is still working properly. There's no way for anyone to manipulate or destroy them. By the way, did you know you can run a node for pennies worth of electricity a month on your laptop? Check the description for a five minute video on how to do this. Anyway, what happened to Bitcoin Cash? The free market voted with their money and you can see how that ended up. But here's what makes Bitcoin special. It's alive. The code can be improved for technical issues. Things like the SegWit upgrade have made Bitcoin better without changing what makes it Bitcoin. 
Think of it like this, you can renovate a house, but you can't change the foundation. Bitcoin's foundation, the 21 million limit, the decentralization, the proof of work, that's locked in forever. Quantum computing threat, Bitcoin can upgrade its cryptography. Someone finds a way to attack it, thousands of developers worldwide can fix it. It's proven already that it's anti-fragile. Each attack has made Bitcoin better and stronger and more decentralized. The secret is in how Bitcoin is built. Imagine two lemonade stands. At the first one, anyone can help make the lemonade better. If you have a good idea, you can suggest it and everyone who contributes gets rewarded based on how much they help to improve the lemonade. At the second stand, only official employees with special permission can make suggestions. Plus, they get paid the same regardless of the outcome. Which lemonade stand makes better lemonade? This is why open source systems like Bitcoin always win. They get the best ideas from the whole world. Look at Linux. It's open source, which is why your Android phone, Tesla, and even the internet itself run better and more securely than closed systems. Thousands of brilliant minds working together will always beat a small team working in secret. So rule number three is that Bitcoin is an open network. The members only lemonade stand wastes time checking permission slips and guarding their secret recipe. The open stand focuses all energy on making better lemonade. Now you might be thinking, wait, if anyone can contribute, couldn't someone break it? Here's the genius part. The fourth rule ties everything together and it's not what most people think. I used to think Bitcoin was secure because of fancy math, but that's just the tool. The real reason is much cooler. It's like a neighborhood where everyone's life savings are stored in their own houses. So everyone really wants to keep it safe instead of just relying on locks and alarms. Miners spend millions on equipment that becomes worthless if Bitcoin fails. Bitcoin owners don't want it hacked, so they run nodes to protect it. And developers want their creation to survive. This creates something that doesn't depend on rules or police. It's something much more powerful than that. It depends on people looking out for themselves. It's like how you don't need a rule to stop you from hitting yourself with a hammer. You just naturally avoid it because Duh. This forces honesty because cheating hurts you more than anyone else. So rule number four is that Bitcoin is secure. Hey, that rhymes. When I first understood this, I literally stopped the video I was watching and said, holy crap. But then I discovered something that made me realize this isn't just revolutionary, it's inevitable. And this changed how I see Bitcoin compared to everything else. Here's a question. Why do we still use email even though it's old and terrible? I mean, who actually likes email? No one. Email sucks, but we use it because everyone else uses it. That's not competition, that's inevitability. I know this probably still sounds a bit abstract, so this took me ages to get my head around it, but it's just like asking everyone to throw away the internet, rip up all their fiber optic cables, and build a whole new one from scratch, just because someone created the internet 2.0, which just basically does the same thing. Nobody's going to do that when all the infrastructure is already laid and everyone's connected and it works perfectly fine. So the thing to get your head around here is that Bitcoin isn't just software. It's mining farms in Texas, nodes in people's basement with billions in infrastructure already spent on the systems. This infrastructure isn't just going to switch when we already have a decentralized, secure digital money that is working and has a 16 year track record. Think of it like rules of a game that everyone agrees to play by. Once everyone agrees the same rules, it's almost impossible to get them to switch. When I understood this, I realized all those Bitcoin killers were like someone trying to invent a new version of football where you use your hands. Sure, it might work better in theory, but good luck getting everyone to switch. Bitcoin isn't just digital money, it's a protocol. And here's the key. Protocols are winner take all, not winner take most. So rule number five is that Bitcoin is a protocol. Most people think Bitcoin competes with thousands of other cryptocurrencies like Apple competes with Samsung. But protocols don't work that way. Bitcoin has the largest network, most users, most infrastructure. It's becoming the standard, like the TCP IP is for the internet. This means betting against Bitcoin is like betting against the internet in 1995. And we all know how that would have worked out. And just for context, 
How many people do you know that don't use the internet today? Exactly. I first heard these rules from Jeff Booth. An open, decentralized, secure protocol bounded by energy. As long as it stays decentralized and secure, a system bounded by energy will reprice all $900 trillion of assets, all. But by the next day, I'd forgotten them. So here's what I did to remember them. I just remembered dopes. Decentralized, open protocol bounded by energy that's secure. No one controls it or can change it. Anyone can use it without permission. The winner takes all, like the internet. It costs electricity, so it can't just be copied infinitely. Everyone that uses it wants to protect it. When these five things combine, they create something that's never existed before. The first global free market. I heard this on a podcast when gardening and I had to stop what I was doing. The penny dropped. I realized why some of the smartest people in the world are so obsessed with Bitcoin and why equally smart people completely miss it. It's not about the technology. It's about recognizing a pattern that's never existed before. I'm not exaggerating when I say this completely changed how I see the world. Once you see these patterns, you can't unsee them. This is why Bitcoin isn't just internet money. It's a complete game changer in how humans will cooperate. For the first time ever, we have a level playing field, whether you're the president of the US or a farmer in rural Africa. Everyone follows the same rules that nobody can change for their own benefit. Look, even if you understand everything I just explained about the five rules of money, it means nothing if you don't understand the answer to this question. What do you think happens when money actually works for everyone? I'm talking about a world where creators get paid fairly, where each year everyone gets richer without doing anything extra, and where the best ideas win instead of whoever has the most connections. You might think this is just theory, but I recently discovered something that completely blew my mind. Artists and creators are already doing this right now, and the results are shocking. You need to watch this next video to see what happens when money actually works for everyone. Oh, and there's one story about a musician who tried something completely different with his latest release. And what happened in the first few hours changed how I think about money 